Marlon Byrd and John Buck, two of the newer Pirates, but they're not the newest Pirates. Justin Morneau, the former twin, is on his way to Pittsburgh and hopes to join the Pirates as they take on the Cardinals for game two of this three-game series, the showdown series. The Pirates winning last night, resounding fashion, and now there's a tie atop the National League Central Division. Once again, Greg Brown and Steve Blast. Steve, I don't know where Neil Huntington is going to stop here. This guy's unbelievable. He's got Bird, Buck, and now Morneau. Every day. It's it's a new uh, piece to the puzzle, and, uh, you know, I was perfectly content to have Marlon Bird as a regular in right field, but now you strengthen the Pirate Ball Club by adding Justin Morneau, MVP in the American League several years ago, four-time all Star. This guy has a resume that is off the charts, especially recently. He has been on fire. So, Neil Huntington, hey, way to go, man. Tip of the cap for sure. Nine home runs for Morneau this month of August. Tied for third most in all of Major League Baseball. A.J. Burnett now on the mound. Francisco Liriano shut the cards down last night. Burnett trying to do that tonight. Yeah, I love having a veteran out. Anytime you can get a veteran out in this kind of a situation where every game has a uh, heightened emphasis, heightened scrutiny. He has been good at home. He's been good at the Cardinals, so that's a good match. Those 11 starts at home, he has given up no more than three runs, so it's been great balance in any of those 11 starts, so I like the veteran. Burnett, one of those Neil Huntington acquisitions, most recently, Bird, Buck, Morneau. Seems like the Pirates are getting a lot of bang for their bucks. Bucks and Cardinals are next. Park where there is palpable excitement and energy. It is electric around town and around this ballpark. And boy, were they fired up when they heard the news. It was one thing to get Bird and Buck, which was great, but Neil Huntington, as we said moments ago, kind of sealed the deal by acquiring Morneau 
earlier this afternoon, and A.J. Burnett takes the hill against an angry bunch of birds. This ain't no holiday weekend for, I guess referring, of course, to Matt Holiday and the St. Louis Cardinals. This uh, angry St. Louis Cardinal club having been shut out in back-to-back -back games. Take a look at this lineup. Still one of the top offenses in baseball. Matt Carpenter, Carlos Beltran, and Matt Holiday. This year he's hitting 386 against Pirates pitching. Alan Craig is the cleanup hitter. And it's Yadier Molina and John Jay. Colton Wong, former first round pick, is at second base. Daniel Descalzo at short. Lance Lynn is on the mound. AJ Burnett starting his 25th game, and his numbers brought to you by Chevrolet. And let's face it, Greg, A.J. Burnett loves the stage. And I think the bigger the stage, the more he likes it. And that's a compliment. You know, you've got to have an ego to, to be a, a major league athlete. And uh, I think this is a good fit for A.J. Burnett. Uh, he is, seems to be pumped up in front of a lot of people. And I don't care what the numbers are. Uh, as I said uh, in the open, I like having a veteran out there. He's been up and down the street in these kind of scenarios. So I'm, I'm very comfortable. And... Uh, well, the, the fact that the Pirates won that game last night, I think everybody uh, kind of had a little sigh of relief. You know, uh, everybody's getting a little antsy, but uh, the Pirates really with emphatic, uh, to me, one of the best games they played all year last night. Check out the defense behind Burnett. Top of the McCutcheon bird in the outfield, left to right. Pedro Alvarez, Clint Farmers on the left side of the infield with Neil Walker and Garrett Jones on the right side, and Russell Martin catches A.J. Burnett. Here, Jones, boy, he was nothing but professional and classy today when talking to reporters. And really, if you look at it, uh, you heard Neil Huntington perhaps earlier on the pregame talking about how this can really uh, create flexibility for Clint Hurdle. Garrett Jones could see a lot of playing time in right field. Strike is called. As Matt Carpenter steps into the box. So Clint Hurdle now has a bunch of pieces to move around. Yeah, and uh, Garrett Jones not only professional today, he was really professional last night. Yeah. Ball to strike on Carpenter, who was 0 for 4 last night. Clean shaven today. Yeah, moved over from second base to third. As uh, playing a little bit of third and second this season, depending on the pitcher. And Mike Matheny wants to get some lefties in that lineup against the right-hander Burnett. Ground ball right side, and Garrett Jones will keep it himself. And that's the way to make that play. Don't get in the pitcher involved unless you have to. One up and one down. AJ Burnett has uh, had success over the uh, St. Louis Cardinals in the past. Showed you the numbers at the top of the telecast. And now Pedro Alvarez maybe with a little word or two with AJ Burnett, who was seven and five in his career against the Cardinals. No stranger start uh, number 16 career wise and he was hooked up against Lance Lynn uh, what three starts ago they both came away with a no decision. And ball one on Beltron. It was a big crowd it was exciting last night Steve but it, it took a little bit of time and maybe as you said a little bit of relief for the Pirates scored a couple and then the back to back home runs in the fourth. Well they've already started their chanting here they're one batter into the ball game. Oh, yeah. Francisco Liriano got the folks pumped up last night with his performance. Yeah. Well, they cheered when AJ threw the first pitch yeah. of the ball game for a strike. Yeah. They got a reaction. They're ready to party on the yeah, North Shore. And as you have said so many times uh, this year, <laughs> right on the money. We don't have to talk about how beautiful this ballpark <laughs> is as much anymore. That's it's true. beautiful anyway when it's empty, but it's gorgeous when it's filled to capacity. Yep. And that's what we have. And they're still coming across the bridge. One ball, one strike count on Beltron. One for four last night. A 282 career hitter against A.J. Burnett. He's seventh in the league in home runs. One ball, one strike, one out. Just underway. And there's a strike. Fastball from Burnett. One and two the count on Beltron. It's 328 from this left side of the plate. 268 as a right hand hitter. Yeah, they want to strike out and they want it right now. The other way. Tabata, a lazy fly ball. We'll have to settle for an out. Two down. Aerial coverage provided by Direct TV. 
if you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. How about that sight? And look at the mix of color in the stands. That's, you know, it's great to see the green, but boy, that, uh, that, that mix is spectacular. Here's Matt Holliday. Fastball misses. Holiday two for three last night. 286 lifetime versus A.J. Burnett. He showed you he's hitting 386 this season against the Pirates. This breaking pitch misses. 2 0. Oh. This ain't no holiday weekend. <laughs> no, it is not. It is not. In that sense of the word. High fly ball. Left field. Tabata settles under it. Tabata. That'll do it. One, two, three. Against the Cardinals. Here come the Bucks. Two of the three game showdown series, the Pirates and the Cardinals. Here is the Bucko lineup. It's brought to you by Toyota. Jose Tabata leads things off. Neil Walker follows. Andrew McCutcheon pretty much wrapping up. Player of the Month award for August. Pedro Alvarez hits cleanup. Then Marlon Bird and Garrett Jones. Russell Martin is hitting over 300 with five homers this year against the Redbirds. Clint Barmas and A.J. Burnett round out the starting nine. Tabata. Last night, two for four, and three for ten lifetime against this pitcher, Steve Lance Lynn. 13 and 8, 383 ERA, this 26 year old right hander out of Marion City, Indiana. 6'5, 240. Drafted uh, high by the Cardinals back in 2008. 13 wins. He had a great year last year, 18 and 7. 13 wins so far, but in his last three starts, Greg, he's 0 and 2. He's worked a total of 18 innings, giving up 12 runs, so people have. 12 earned runs, so people have been getting to him recently. And as we said, uh, hooked up three starts ago against AJ, that 6 5 Cardinal win. But uh, make no mistake about it, 18 wins last year as a rookie, 13 more this year. This is a developing, very good right hand major league pitcher. Bounce foul by Tabata. Got it going last night with a ground single to right field. His first time up. Oh, and two. He was two for four last night. All four plate appearances, he went the other way. Singled his first time. He flied out to right fielder Carlos Beltran. His second time up, he doubled to right field. His third at bat, and he grounded out to second. His final at bat, and he takes. A strike as he offered, according to Scott Berry. 
either a hard slider or cut fastball. Just uh, too tough to lay off on the outside part of the plate. Maybe a little bit off the outside corner, but there you see the commitment. And there you see the first pirate out. That's led 6'5", 240. His career against the Pirates, 4-1, 417 ERA. Neil Walker takes ball one. Walker had a couple of hits last night. Batting just 176 against Lance Lynn. Line drive, base hitting the right. Solid contact. Single off Lynn with one out. Crack of the bat. You just got it flush. And you can see by the location, a hittable location. And he didn't miss his chance. A rare 0 for last night. McCutcheon still hitting 325th highest in the league. Tied for ninth with those 74 ribbies. And you see that OPS. Very strong. Among the league leaders in almost every offensive category. Sure. It's ball one. Certainly a lot of discussion about uh, MVP candidacy. Would you think, Greg, that he needs to, to bump the home runs up to, to, to get a more complete package? To... I think, Steve, would have, my opinion is I think whoever wins this division. Molina gets the MVP if the Cardinals win the division. McCutcheon gets it if the Pirates win. I just think that's where it stands. He's having a sensational month of August. Hitting 404. Leads the league in on-base percentage this month. Well, if it gets down to numbers head-to-head, -head, he's got seven more home runs than Molina has. But uh, this is going to be a challenge against Lance Lynn. Uh, in spite of the th last three starts that I mentioned, this guy's still ranked among National League leaders in strikeouts, uh, starts, least home runs. Uh, he's up there in walks too, so uh, you got to be patient because you might uh, wind up making him throw a lot of pitches, maybe get some free passes along the way. But he's got good stuff, good stuff. All star last year in his rookie year. His record against the Pirates this season the Cardinals have won three of the four starts. Three of their five wins against the Pirates with Lynn on the mound. Well, that, doesn't that feel good to say? Just just five yeah. wins. Pirates have won nine of the 14 games played. And now the count goes to three and two. That 95 mile per hour fastball missing. The Bucks are six and two here at PNC Park against the Cardinals. They've outscored the Redbirds in this ballpark, their home, 32 to seven. In those. Six wins. And, and think of that with, with the, the National League's uh, leading batting average team wise. Strike three call. McCutcheon thought it was going to be ball four. And he's going to put the bat down either way. And, uh, Mike DeMuro calls him out on strikes. We'll get a chance to review this. Well, you don't see that reaction from McCutcheon. At all. Let's see. Uh, you've got to think McCutcheon. Wow. Well, didn't miss by a lot. <laughs> so two outs. Brings up Pedro Alvarez. Mike DeMuro calling the balls and strikes. Scott Barry at first. Alfonso Marquez at second. And Ted Barrett at third. McCutcheon out on strikes, two down. Alvarez at the plate. Well, 
last night with uh, Ted Barrett behind the plate, uh, the pitchers are getting that inside pitch to the, I mean, the pitch on the third base side of home plate. And uh, when you get an umpire that uh, is, is kind of leaning in a particular direction for whatever reason, uh, it's not up to you to change it. It's up to you to play to it, whether you're a hitter or a pitcher. Simple as that. 2 and 0. Three balls, no strikes. Alvarez, 222 batting average against Lance Lynn, was 0 for 3 last night. Leads the league in homers with 32. He's sixth in RBIs. Did you give Garrett Jones or Pedro Alvarez the green light here? Yep. Breaking pitch, strike. Alvarez was ready to toss that bat aside. Strike. Walker at first with two outs. Chases. Three and two. On deck is Marlon Bird. Chopped on the right side. And Wong makes the play. The Pirates leave a man. One inning complete at PNC Park. It's nothing, nothing. Baseball on Luke Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Let's go Bucks. Buckos and Cardinals. Game two of the three-game series. They will play in St. Louis next weekend, these two teams. 30 years to get my first Pirates game. Put me on TV. That's... Done That's deal. an order. Yeah, you just ask Mr. Tomey. He's got you on there. Last time we were this good, my dad and Barry Bonds were skinny. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's been a while. <laughs> it is a packed house. Yeah, the Pirates have taken over the city of Pittsburgh. Yeah. Alan Craig, seven game hitting streak. 96 RBIs, third in the league. Paul Goldschmidt has driven in 104. Brandon Phillips of the Reds has driven in 97. And then Craig in his 96 ribbies. 
The Reds are in Colorado tonight. They lost last night, so they're three and a half back of the Pirates and Cardinals in the Central. AJ Burnett, his 25th start, trying to win his seventh decision. One ball, one strike on Alan Craig. And they're all dressed for the occasion. The Pirates. One and two on Alan Craig. Craig uh, one for four last night. One of just four hits for the St. Louis Cardinals, who were shut out by the Reds the final game of that series. Before they came to Pittsburgh, they lost to Cincinnati 10 nothing. Final game of their homestand. Check swing. Ooh. I also thought it was a pretty good looking pitch. Could have gone either way then. With, uh, yeah, without even having to swing. Let's take a look. Yeah, not, you're yeah. not going to get a call third strike, but unless you're, I could be smart about it. See, unless you're Andrew McCutcheon, because yeah. that's exactly where his pitch was, where he's called strike. Strike three. Two and two. And to right. And a base hit. Bird over to cut it off. Alan Craig has a leadoff single in an eight game hitting streak. When these Cardinals get it going, they will base hit you to death. Not so much with power, but just a lot of base hits, a lot of runs scored. That's why they're up on top of the National League in those team categories of hitting. One of A.J. Burnett's rougher outings of the year. No, it was a no decision against these Cardinals in St. Louis a couple of weeks ago. Gave up five runs in four and a third innings. Fly ball to Bird. Off the bat of Yadier Molina. Brings up John Jay with one away. And let's get to our Allegheny Health Network injury update. Jason Grilly rehab assignment in Altoona began tonight. And he started for the curve to get an inning in. He got that inning in. He will pitch again on Monday. And if all goes well, he'll then pitch Wednesday for Indianapolis. And then they will reassess, which means more than likely, if he feels good, he would join the Pirates uh, later next week. Now we will have to ask about uh, what Billy's role would be initially. When he joins the Pirates. Not to say that he's going to go right into that closest role immediately. Here are the roster moves made today. Stolby Pimentel has joined the team. Justin Morneau, his flight due to land in about 20 minutes. One ball, one strike. Andrew Lambeau option to double A Altoona. Their season ends early this week, so they'll be right back in Pittsburgh in just a couple of days. The Pimentel is available in the bullpen. Two and one on John Jay. And I don't think there's any reason that uh, Grilly shouldn't be promoted to Indianapolis after having a good Absolutely. start with Altoona. No yeah, he's, he's out to a good start. Yep. He deserves that. No, I don't know if I'm reading this right, Greg, but the last time the Cardinals were shut up back to back games was last year, almost at this time. The Pirates shutting them out August 28 and 29. Back to back dates. Line drive. And a catch. Wow. Clint Barmas turned that into two. Mr. B. Oh. What a play. Wow. What a play. Let it go stretch. Blistered into the glove of the Bucko veteran shortstop. There's one on the first for two.
They were able to host a guest. His name is 19-year-old Nick Gardner, and he's a kid who's been battling his eye, uh, getting his eyesight back his entire life. He was brought in for a meet and greet at the Pirates Clubhouse, and his dream was to hit a walk-off home run at PNC Park as he grew up a Pirates fan, and there he is in full uniform with A.J. Burnett pitching to him. He's able to make contact with the ball. He can see it. He can see the bases as he runs, and there's the entire team coming in to mob him. Fireworks went off. The victory song played at the end of the day, and it was a beautiful thing that the Pirates did for 19-year-old Nick Gardner. And the cool thing about him, one of his dreams was to make the choir at school, Greg. And not only did he make the choir for the first year, he was promoted to the elite choir group in his second year. So that was one dream he was able to fulfill, and the Pirates were able to step in and help him fulfill yet another dream, his sporting dream, rounding the bases on a walk-off here on the North Shore, and what a beautiful thing it was. Mm -hmm. and what a way Robbie, to race the Jolly Roger. Yeah, absolutely. And Robbie, uh, it was really neat for the folks here during the pregame to see that footage you just showed on the scoreboard. It was a An very ovation. touching moment. Yeah, and a great ovation from Nick Gardner from this crowd. So. Well, there's, there's some special things that, that just hit you and uh, hit you right in the heart, and that's that's one of them. That was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Marlon Bird <laughs> takes a strike. <laughs> This is a, this is, is what that we, joy, that, that's joy. It's a 657. He is watching it play out. Nick Gardner watching the footage. He had not seen the highlights before. Neat stuff. Not only you hit the home run, the walk off, but they do slow mo. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, they slow it down. Yeah. All those special plays. Two balls and a strike on Marlon Bird, playing in his fourth Pirate game. Yep, there is a new bird in town. The, the parrot has some competition. Well, I think the parrot's definitely in second place now. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt. I, I don't think he likes it either. And he doesn't like you saying it, by the way. There's a shot past Bird. Extra bases for the Birdman. He's got two, and he puts on the brakes wisely. There's a bird loose in the corner. A lead-off double. Right in the middle of the strike zone, right in the middle of the hitting zone, and he just rifles it down into the corner. Shot for the Allegheny Health yep. Network. Super Mo, and then he puts on the brakes. Yep. There's red birds, and then there's buckle birds. Garrett Jones at the plate. Got a nice ovation from the sellout crowd. His four RBI night leading the way to that 5 0 shutout last night. And that was a defining moment, too, because it looked like Shelby Miller was going to leave the bases loaded. I mean, he was just airing it out as good a fastball as I've seen him have. And of course, Garrett is a strikeout candidate, but he was able to have a great at bat and not just push the ball to the opposite field, he rifled it. To right field for two runs. I thought that was, I thought that was the key to the ball game. Other than Liriano, who was so special. Bounce towards short. And don't move the runner. And Jones, by the way, gave credit to a conversation he had with Marlon Bird just a couple of days ago. And what Bird told him, he took into the batting cages, and he felt real good about it uh, last night. And obviously, it showed by his performance. And here he moves Bird to third base for one out. Yeah, some of the classy things that it, it's not all about the, the high profile guys and the superstars. It's it's the subtleties, the, the things that guys like Clint Barmer say and Gary Jones, how they handle themselves, uh, what they add to the, the ball club. And sure, you want talent first. You, you want as much as you can get. But uh, don't don't forget about the, the subtleties either. I think, Steve, when they talk about club, clubhouse chemistry, that stuff's more important than chemistry. Uh huh. Yeah. Talent first, yep. and then how you go about your business as a professional. Infield in. Russell Martin homered last night in his 12th of the year. Batting just 182 against Lance Lynn in previous matchups. Another Canadian will join the team within maybe the next oh, 45 minutes. British Columbia? Mm-hmm. So Martin, Justin Morneau. 
2 and 0 the count. I imagine that will be a, a real quick trip from the airport to PNC Park. Yeah. Minimal traffic on a Saturday. Yep. Everybody into the ballpark by now. They might end up with an escort. Yep. Heading for the river. Heading for the North Shore. I would not be surprised if uh, they don't line up to get him here. You know, during the break, uh, the scoreboard announced the headlines to the crowd, and they erupted when they saw that. Really, shades of 1979 when Pete Peterson traded early in the year for Tim Foley to shore up the defense at short, and then later that summer acquired Bill Madlock from the Giants. And we were promised that if we got in this kind of position that the Pirates would do everything they can to fit the pieces of the puzzle that are needed and boy have they ever. And it's been kind of an ongoing process for more than just this season more than just this month. It's been a continual parade of acquisitions yeah. by Neil Huntington that are looking pretty darn good. There's one there's one at the plate. He takes ball four. And it brings up Clint Barmas who really flashed his leather. Yeah. As he did last night. This is a continuation. And the timing has to be right. The reaction. And he goes up and sideways. And then like a veteran knows that he's got the double play. He'll hold on to the ball because now he can play catch at first base and not have to throw off balance. I mean this this guy has a presence at shortstop. Alan Craig had gone halfway to second base fully expecting that line drive by John Jay to get it to left. First and third now Lynn looks for a double play ball from Barmas with A.J. Burnett on deck. In the dirt. Lynn can get wild. He has walked 63 batters. That's ranked among the leaders in that category in the National League. And you have a tendency when you look at a, a rookie pitcher like Lance Lynn who wins 18 games you think well you know if you win 18 games you automatically assume he's like a five or six year veteran. Well he's not he's in his second full year. All the strike on Barmas. Marlon Bird doubled to start the inning, went to third on the ground out. Russell Martin walked. Barmas, who was 0 for 4 last night, hitting 286 against Lance Lynn. And this season, 280 against St. Louis pitching. Runner goes from first, and it's bounced to third. Play to the plate. Bird will be thrown out. They sent Martin. Barmas bounces to Carpenter and the play at the plate. Fielder's choice goes 5 2. Ball was not chopped. There was obviously no play at second base, so they go home for the, the easy tag. Barmas wind up with runners at first and second, but not close at home as Marlin takes off on contact and. Carpenter gets the job done. Once you get it to Molina, it's over. And of course, that is the play. You have to send that runner in that situation. AJ Burnett, one RBI this season, three out of 48. Round ball. Fair ball on the right. Runner going to be waved home. Here comes the throw toward third. Safe there. AJ Burnett. With his fourth hit of the year. One nothing Bucks. Yeah. He's loving the stage. And they're loving AJ right now. He's put up a couple zeros. And he drives in the first run of the ball game. He's sneaking a peek at that replay that you're watching on the scoreboard. They're showing that now. Put it in play. Hope for the best.
second ribby of the year for A.J. Burnett and the Zoltan Z to his dugout. Kind of a ho-hum. Strike one on top of them. One nothing Pirates. Marmus to third on the play. And Lance Lynn snatching at that ball, grabbing at that ball. The frustration of giving up that RBI single to his mound opponent. And A.J. will let Alan Craig know exactly what happened in that at bat. One ball, one strike on Tabata. Struck out in the first. Here we are now in the second inning as the Pirates strike again early against the Cardinals. Rev up the volume. Pirates lead 2 nothing here in the second. That's Lynn reacts. That's top of his game right there, Steve. Again. Yep, slice that ball. Go slice and dice. Go the other way. Pitch was in on him. Rounds it sharply in the right. They'll start shifting on him like a left hand yeah. pull hitter. All in one on Walker. Walker single to right in the first inning. The Pirates, much like uh, we saw them do to Shelby Miller last night, really making Lance Lynn work. Marlon Bird got it started with a double. 0 oh 2 on Walker. There's a lot of things that are, that are good, and on that list of good things is two out offense. Back to back RBI singles with two outs from AJ Burnett and Jose Tabata. Whoa! Burnett might get thrown out. Oh, he's safe. The ball there. came right back to Molina. <laughs> Very stylish slide by the veteran AJ Burnett. Never know what's going to happen on these wild pitches off the limestone. Fortuitous bounce for Molina. And a lower throw might have gotten it. There it is, right there. He's got a chance. Catches a little bit of a flyer. Sliding in back of the third baseman. Yeah. Well, like he's done it before. Carpenter saying, Where'd he go? Well, he's in back there, where he should be. The minute he sees Carpenter inside that lane from second to third, you're going to go in the back door. Then he's got to turn around and find you. But a base hit here from Walker with two outs. That down low, two and two. Mike Bethany's Cardinals came into this series having won 12 of their last 17 games. Three and two, and McCutcheon is on deck. Lance Lynn keeps wiping that sweat off his forearm. A hot, muggy night. Yeah, he's out of sorts a little yep. bit here. That's a good one. Back to the nest. 24th pitch of the inning coming up. 40th of the game for Lynn, and he walked him. Loading them from McCutcheon. And here comes Derek Lilliquist, and it could be a turning point, big turning point of this ball game. Pitching coach for the Cardinals on his way out to talk 
with Lance Lynn and maybe give him a little bit of a blow here because he has really worked this inning. Uh oh. Is that flight 733? Well, it's delayed then from Arlington. Oh, it is delayed. You're right. Well, 750 due to arrive. Right. Oh, okay. So that could be it. Right on time. In from Arlington, Texas. Very well, could be. You got to get that pilot who landed that uh, that plane in uh, the Hudson River, New yeah. York City. Sully, save some time. Yeah, yeah. Sully, you got the Allegheny available. Yep. Now, Andrew McCutcheon, the base is loaded. He struck out looking in the first. Burnett at third, Tabata at second, Walker at first. But slicing into the seats. Boy, and could you see a track meet right now if Andrew were to find a corner? So, uh, catch. Oh, man. Stay with it. Stay with it. And, yeah, a little snow cone. But nice. You, you better have your act together if you want to get a foul ball now because they don't play around in empty seats. Right. Oh, and one. Oh, 95 upstairs, and it's 0 and 2 on McCutcheon. Burnett singled in the first run, rounding it to right field. He went to third on the wild pitch. Tobin also went to second base as Neil Walker drew a free pass. And now 0 and 2 the count on McCutcheon. Ball two strikes. McCutcheon did not like the call from Mike DeMuro. He was called out on the 3 2 pitch in the first. He's in the hole one and two. Two nothing Pirates. A hit from McCutcheon. Would make this place probably explode. One and two the count. Two and two. Tough take. That did not miss by much. Tough take. Especially in light of what you're just talking about. The first at bat. Doesn't miss by much. You know, from where he throws that three-quarter delivery, that ball, you know, visually is appearing like it's it's coming across that strike zone on the way in. It winds up outside, but for a long time it's looking pretty good. Three and two. Showtime. Showtime indeed. With no place to put Andrew McCutcheon. Lance Lynn has to come in here with a strike. Yeah, he is he is laboring. This is his 30th pitch of the inning, and on McCutcheon's part, Steve, he's got to be as, as patient as you can be too, right? Discipline. Discipline. In on McCutcheon. AJ Burnett looks toward the dugout. Like, whoa. Well, there better be a little something extra in my envelope if you're going to put me in this risk situation. I'll tell you, there was a roar when Lance Lynn was warming up to deliver that pitch. That's AJ Burnett. This pitch. <laughs> it really wasn't that close, but. No. But, but AJ always has a flair for yeah, the dramatic. Yeah. Still three and two on McCutcheon. Popped him up. Second baseman, Wong. Makes the play. The Pirates score two. Send eight men to the plate. On to the third. Two nothing Pittsburgh.
of options, not only the first seven innings, but the last three innings as well for bats off the bench, defensive versatility. Um, and, and in our environment, depth is really important. And, and we felt like we've upgraded our, our everyday lineup. But in, in, and as a result, we've also upgraded our bench and, and made our, you know, made, uh, made Clint's job a little bit easier as he's got a number of weapons that he can use to help win a game. Neil Huntington talking about the arrival of uh, Justin Morneau, the former MVP, and the fireworks barge getting ready. Third Eye Blind performing in concert, part of Sky Blast. AT&T tweet, how big of an impact does adding a guy like Morneau, a former MVP with playoff experience, have on this team, Steve? It can't hurt. <laughs> this, this is a very, very... Very good major league player, and anytime you can get good talent, uh, it's a plus. Uh, yeah, he adds to it. And uh, we talked about putting pieces to the puzzle. If we got in this position, and that's what they have done, continue doing. Simple as that. And showing people, everybody, that sending a message. They mean business. Yeah, they're doing everything they can, and uh, and the message is getting received. You got yeah, 38, right. 39,000 people that are receiving that message here tonight. John Bach, Marlon Bird. Trade earlier in the week from the Mets. And Morneau hitting 281 this season against right handed pitching. Neil Huntington talked about uh, how Morneau has gotten hot the second half of the season, especially in August. Nine homers, 21 RBIs this month. And how we should like that Clemente wall. And this is very much a business situation. Uh, if you can help your ball club, and it might hurt somebody else's career, their playing time. I mean, it, it, it's the way it works. That's why they call it the big leagues. It's, it has to be that way. It's unfortunate. Uh, sometimes uh, people get burned, lose, lose a, a, a regular position. But you've got to continue to try to get better. It's as simple as that. And it can be as cold as that. Rookie Colton Wong takes the ball two and one. Jeff Bannister, bench coach with Clint Hurdle. Burnett, bottom third of the order here. Line to right by Colton Wong. So the former first round pick singles to right to start the third. Place a deposit for your 2014. Season tickets from full season to half and 20 game plans. There's always a plan that works perfectly just for you. Enjoy great benefits all season long when you're a season ticket holder. And remember, when you make your deposits now, you receive 2013 postseason priority. Place your deposits. Go to pirates.com slash deposit. Daniel Descalzo. Bounces this toward first, a foul ball. Handled over there by Garrett Jones. Yeah. He's gonna make he's gonna make the play. He's only gonna wind up with one play at first if it's a fair ball because of what his body is doing, heading over into foul territory. But good to go through with the play. Always go through with the play. Let the umpire sort it out. Burnett, AJ, uh, very aware, as is Russell Martin, of the speed of Wong. So if he takes off, AJ's got to help his catcher. And his catcher has been fabulous, throwing to second base. There he goes. Ground ball to the right side. Just one play. Mike, Walker. Mike McKinney sends him at the right time. And they're in position instead of having two outs and nobody on. Sharply hit. Well, the Scalzo runs very well, too. It's not an automatic double play, but that ball was sharply hit. Pirates would have had a good chance. Lance Lynn has driven in two runs this season. He tries to match his mound opponent. 
AJ Burnett who singled in the Pirates first run in the bottom of the second. Yep, you like the opportunity here to work against your mind mound opponent, but don't forget about the guy third uh, at second base, uh, second base perhaps thinking about third base if you forget about him. Oh, and two on Lance Lynn. Knocks off uh, Martin's mask. Yep, yep. That's the life we've chosen. He yeah. just said that that's to home plate umpire it. Mike DeMuro. <laughs> it happens. That's the way it is. According to Lee Strasburg, uh, and the Godfather, talking to Michael Corleone. He says, Michael, this is the life we've chosen. Struck him out. That's the first for A.J. Burnett tonight. Two down. Yep. Tidy strikeout, and that's what you're supposed to do. That's what veterans do in these situations. Now Matt Carpenter. Long single to start the third. Carpenter has driven in 66 runs. He has scored 100 runs, the most in the league. Good numbers against uh, A.J. Burnett coming into this game. Seventh in the league and hitting coming in as well, that 311 mark. If he held his bat a little higher, he might put you in mind of Craig Council. Not so much with the batting average, his uh, numbers uh, much higher. But what about Steve? What like about it. what about no batting gloves in that stance since he's trying to walk that one off? Uh, John Mabry, the former Cardinal, batting coach, the batting coach now. Yeah. I always thought John Mabry was real, real good hitter, yeah. real, real solid. John Mabry. Major League producer. One ball, one strike on Carpenter. Two and one. Carpenter with eight hits and 19 at bats against AJ Burnett. And that's what he's done with runners in scoring position. It's the whole team has been good in these situations. It's the third highest mark in the National League. With runners in scoring position. His teammate Alan Craig hits 452, the best mark in the league. Matt Holiday in the top 10, Carlos Beltran and Yadier Molina. And that's why they uh, they do so well offensively. It's not how many hits you get, it's it's the runs you score. So they're getting hits when they produce runs. And, uh, the next day in the in the standings, uh, they don't tell you who won by the number of hits. It's the number of runs. Who gets more than the other guys? They, they do it very well. Leaders, there are three of the top five in the National League. Carlos Beltran and Matt Carpenter at the plate, are, along with uh, Molina and Craig, up there among the very best as Martin and Barmas go to the mound. Jay Burnett fan. He's well disguised. Well, the camo. He walks him. So it's first and second for Carlos Beltran. First walk for Burnett. Beltran flied out to left field his first at bat. Forty career at bats against A.J. Burnett for Beltran. Eleven hits, two homers, and a strike.
net with 167 strikeouts on the year. That is in the top 10. Keep in mind he missed them three weeks as a ground ball. Base hit. Two to one. Beltron with his 71st RBI scores Wong. Seventy-one RBIs for the veteran Carlos Beltran. Sharply hit out of the reach of Neil Walker. If he didn't get that much wood on it, uh, Neil might have been able to get to it, but it was sharply hit. See the quick release back into the infield by Marlon Bird. The running Redbirds. That's where they do their running. They don't steal a lot of bases because they don't need to take the risk of running into an out. They have a lot of traffic on the bases without having to steal. Now Matt Holliday. Ball one. You see AJ trying to crowd him, maybe take that that move he likes to put on the ball to right field and try to tie him up, prevent him from doing that. He seems to live toward right field and right center against the Pirates. That RBI scoring Wong 21 consecutive scoreless inning streak is over for the Cardinals. They mentioned they had been shut out by the Reds. On Wednesday and blanked by the Pirates last night. Beltron puts an end to that string. One ball one strike on Holiday. Now one and two. Good use of the breaking ball by AJ. Well, I would have thought there'd be more there, Steve. More to right, at least against the Pirates. It seems like yeah. every one of his hits yeah, is to the right field. Paying attention to it more to right than the other directions, I guess. Bounce toward third and a foul ball. Had trouble written all over it. Of course, if it's fair ball, then Pedro's probably got a chance to get it. Almost a, a blue cast to it, uh, a soft blue lighting to a gorgeous downtown area. That is uh, what a portrait. And then the background, it looks like kind of the background of a movie set. With that contrast. Pretty slick stuff. Pretty pictures. Got him swinging at the pitch in the dirt. Hart will have to throw to first to complete the strikeout. That'll do it. Cardinals get on the board.
Root Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. And by Levin Furniture and the all-new Levin Mattress Stores. For a great deal on a new bed, shop Levin's. Let's go box. There it is, two to one. Pirates lead the Cardinals. Go to the bottom of the third inning. Pennant fever has swept the region. And really not just even in Pittsburgh. It's all over the country. Folks rooting for the Pirates. That's our old logo there. It's Three River Stadium stuff, yep. isn't it? Yeah, that was the 100 year anniversary uh, logo. Now Alvarez fly ball to center. And can't make the catch. Into second base is Alvarez just to show you the strength of this man. He hit Almost that. One handed it. On the, on the end of the bat also. Over the head of Jay. That pitch is outside. Word. He just hits it with the end of the bat. Bully for him. Rightfully bully. Super Bowl from Allegheny Health Network. The attempt by John Jay as Alvarez who's out of the zone down and away to hit that ball over the head of the center fielder. And here's Marlon Byrd as the Pirates try to get that run right back. Ball, one strike the count on Bird. Doubled past third in the second. Look from the blimp. And Bird will be looking to go the other way. Talked to Marlon Bird yesterday about being back in a pennant race. This is his uh, third. Was with the Phillies. The early 90s independent race. Or sorry, 2003. And then uh, 2009 was with the Rangers. And they fell at the very end to Anaheim. Now, Bird with the Bucks and up the middle and a base hit. Labor will wave home the runner. And Alvarez will score without a throw. Marlon Bird, two for two. That's what you call moving him over. And keeping him going. Right in back of Lance Lynn, that ground ball was kind of meandering out the center field. Pedro Alvarez digging it out. That's the bird sign. The Z and the bird wings. I'll tell you, they're going in the direction that uh, cost us a, a relief pitcher once because he didn't know all the handshakes. You know, they're going to have to get up to speed and know what all that stuff means. When you were playing? Yeah, Bob Miller. Yeah. Oh. You couldn't get all the, you know, the, the lock and the hands yeah. and the bumps. And I didn't know they did that stuff back then. Did you have your own personal little handshake? Yeah. Yeah. That was it? Yeah. That was boring. You didn't do any kind of flashing oh. stuff, huh? I, I guess they did the, the, the bump. Yeah, they, uh, okay. All right, here's regular you ready? Shape. Yeah. All right, we got shape. like yeah. that. Yeah. Boom. Boom. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so that's what actually did, we huh? hurt his arm. <laughs> and uh, we had to release. So that's what cost Miller. <laughs> Yeah, we had some of that stuff. 
I yes. really didn't think you guys had that back. Oh, we had a little bit of it. it. Bird on it first with the RBI, and now Jones, a 3 0 count, and a four pitch walk. And Lance Lynn once again had to work hard in the second, and now has given up a run on two hits. Already here in the third, he walks Jones. Yeah, that's his third walk, so he adds to his season's total, and uh, control has been an issue for him. Eric Lilliquist has already made one trip to the mound. 3 1, and Martin at the plate. And uh, brought third baseman Carpenter in. One ball, no strikes. He's showing bun again. Apparently, Martin being asked to try and sacrifice the runners. Here comes Mike Matheny. And nobody warming up. This is uh, this is going to be a one-sided conversation. We can't help you if you don't throw strikes. And that's a former catcher who uh, knows all about this subject. You got a young pitcher, and uh, these are not uncommon to have these conversations between a manager and a youngster trying to get it together. Yeah, right, yeah. too. It is a very one sided conversation. And that's what you do as a young pitcher, you just nod. Mike Matheny in his second year as skipper, four time Gold Glove Award winner, former Cardinal. Couple years with the Giants. Started his career with Milwaukee. And Lance Lynn. Pirates uh, might have him on the ropes here early going, third inning. And what will uh, Russell Martin be doing here? Not bunting. And by the way, throwing his 60th pitch, and you cannot make a living averaging 20 pitches an inning. I guess you can make a living, but uh, you're going to have to earn it by throwing a lot of pitches. Hit well toward right center field. Jay back toward the wall. Gone! Clear the deck. Cannonball coming. Russell Martin. Gives the Buckos a 6 nothing lead in the third. He hits it to the go zone. Right center field. There's a lot of carry in that direction. Jay kept going over. And Jay kept going over. And then the ball went over the fence. Number it is party time on the North Shore. And he continues to hit home runs against the Cardinals. Golf Tower lit up again. That's Lynn reacts. He thought he had an out. Well, no read lips. He is not happy. Russell Martin homered last night. He now has 13 on the year. 51 RBIs. There's the baseball. And the Pirates leading six to one. And uh, Lance Lynn does not give up many home runs. He has been among the best in keeping the ball in the ballpark. But that is a direction. I'm convinced that that is a a channel out there that uh, the ball just keeps on cruising. Remember, Martin was going to bunt the first two pitches, but Lynn fell behind, and Matheny came out and probably said, "You need to throw strikes." Shades of Bob Robertson. Well, he missed a bunt side, hit the ball out. 
Three run home run opens up the gate. A lot of baseball left to play but boy that feel good. Still one ball and two strikes. He continues to labor. Nobody out here in the bottom of the third inning. And uh, this is like a, a group of sharks now in this ballpark. These fans, they're, 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 they're looking for a feeding frenzy. To the left, Holiday. Out and one down. A double, a single, a walk, and a home run started this bottom of the third inning before Lynn got his first out. Aerial coverage provided by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. That's about where it is right now, too. Kind of hovering over the pirate dugout. Look at this. Man, that's packed. They might set. There's a line drive toward right center field and caught by Beltron. A.J. Burnett singled in a run in the second and lines out here to Beltron in the third. Two away. A.J. getting his hacks. You know, they're trying to pitch him inside and they got away with it. They just simply got away with it that time. <laughs> Tabata now struck out and singled in a run. Six runs, seven hits for the Pirates, one run, three hits for the Cardinals. There you go, Martin. number five, five. 13 home runs, 51 ribbies. Five home runs here hit by the Pirates. It all works. All connected. Three run Martini. Second time that Martin has homered in back to back games. Look at the off day tomorrow. With, uh, John Buck behind the plate. Probably Chris Johnson. They haven't announced it, but very likely that the lefty Chris Johnson will make his second pirate start. Left hander. And three and two. An RBI single for Tabata last inning. Bouncing ball off the glove of the pitcher. Shortstop coming on. And he'll have no play. Descalzo came in. Ball deflected off of Lynn's glove and he is honked. All right. You got new phraseology. He is honked. He's also tired. Right now. He's been laboring. Greg, you talk about Chris Johnson. He's the guy that came in. What, yeah, six scoreless? Start. Yeah, he yeah. didn't start. He came in relief and made that. Uh, brilliant, brilliant yeah, out. Six scoreless. Might as well have been a start. I called that no, a start. All start. right. This day and age. Yeah. yeah. Not a great uh, start to this series. Yeah, we're in dark. The pipe for the Cardinal fans. Uh, in the dirt. The uh, 
Mike Bettini doesn't want to have to go to his bullpen early. He only got four and a third innings out of uh, Shelby Miller last night. But if Lynn uh, loses Walker, he might have to think about loosening, loosening somebody up. Of course, the rosters expand tomorrow, so the benches and the bullpens will be packed. Fly ball to right field. Back is Beltron to the warning track, nearing the wall. And he can't make the catch. Stays in play. Walker headed to third. Top of the scores. The throw late. Seven. One. Bucks. Very high. And again, a lot of carry in that direction to the 375 sign. But it looked like because of the height, Beltron was going to be able to get back there and get it. Well, I, I got to tell you, that's on, was, that's on Beltron. I think Beltron thought that wall was going to be coming up sooner than it was. Yep. And he was kind of timing it rather than go back, get yourself where you can make a, a last-minute adjustment. And that's what you have to do on those kind of balls. Get back where you're comfortable and then move late if you get the chance. Cutchin has struck out and popped up. That's a little kind of circuitous route also. We'll take it. We'll take everything we can get. Runs, runs, always, always more runs. One ball, one strike. Pretty neat. 21 22. You can win with those. Uh, Players that wore those numbers. One that still does, of course. And we're touching in the hole. One ball, two strikes. Now the bullpen. I mean, 80 pitches now, really up thereabouts. So you, you've got to do something. That is and uh, Seth Manus. And again, you can use as many as you want because you're going to get a whole bunch of new players tomorrow. Pitch number 80 right here in the bottom of the third inning. That'll do it. McCutcheon strikes out, but the Pirates have an inning. The highlight, Russell Martin. Three run homer. 7 1 Pirates. on Root Sports is brought to you by Kia. To learn more, visit PGHKiaDealers.com and by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Fox. Here on Root Sports, we are bringing you Pirates baseball from PNC Park. Game two of the three-game series. Sole possession of first place on the line tonight. 
Pirates leading it seven to one. Russell Martin's three run homer. Check out our uh, barrel automotive league leader stat. A look at some of the MVP contenders. We were talking about it earlier with Andrew McCutcheon and Yadier Molina. Uh, Molina, Joey Votto certainly in the, the uh, discussion. And Paul Goldschmidt, who has the uh, RBI lead in the National League and is one behind Pedro Alvarez in the home run lead. Yadier Molina hitting 330 to lead the National League. And Andrew McCutcheon, you see the OPS numbers and the war numbers, uh, wins above replacement. Saber metrics stat, but one that uh, a lot of people look at very closely. What replacement of what? Of a of a player at that position, any other player. That's how many more wins he provides. Lou Gehrig going to that category? I don't know what his war would be. I have to look that up. Did he replace Wally Pitt? Yes. He did all right. Pretty good. Well, it goes back to your 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 stance, in, and I understand it about a division winner or, or postseason play. If you go with a team concept, you got Molina and, and McCutcheon for sure. If you go with an individual, Goldschmidt uh, probably has the better package. Two and one, the count. Yadier Molina on deck. Andrew McCutcheon. Two and two. Uh, McCutcheon finished third in MVP voting last year. Won a gold glove for the first time. All star again. All star this season. And uh, it will be. An interesting division race and an MVP race all the way to the end. Alan Craig down on strikes. Third K. So again, uh, the numbers among the contenders for MVP. So you think, Steve, probably the. the, the Goldschmidt's going to have a tough shot because the Diamondbacks appear to be out of it. Right. It depends on whether you go team concept yeah. or individual. Yeah. There have been MVPs on losing teams. Two and zero on Molina. Jay Burnett has given up three hits. The, the actual name, most valuable, most valuable to lead your team to postseason play. That that has a lot of drag, There's a lot of uh, substance. Clint Hurdle likes to say the MVP is the baddest dude in the league. And that, and that that speaks to individual, doesn't it? Uh, but if the baddest dude drags his team along into October baseball, then it's certainly a significant factor. Ground ball. Nice play by Barmich. Slash back this house. He can play some short. Did it last night, the leaping catch, getting the double play early in this ball game, and he is spoilless. I mean, that's a tough play. And Watch he, this he, last he hop. Makes it, he makes it every night. Stay with that last hop. Yeah, because that's an in-between hop. But what has been nice during the summer as you watch him do what he does so well is to watch him make that play. And you've been watching Neil Walker go up and back to second base. It's been kind of fun to watch those guys when they make those types of plays. Or do their, pitch, their, their pitchers appreciate that. To Parmas into a double play to end the second. Certainly have been teams uh, that uh, are gifted offensively that can run a long way with a guy who uh, gets it done with his glove more than he gets it done with his bat. That's uh, there have been teams like that. The 
but you've got to you've got to cover them. You, you've got to provide that uh, offense somewhere else. Done. Done. Marlon Bird. Pedro Alvarez. Soon these Pirates will be joined by Justin Morneau. Derek Jones, the big night last night. More great shots. And they're getting ready for Sky Blast. Put a lot of the buildings to good use across the river. The sky blast. So PPG place over there. It, it's kind of heading in the direction of being a real, real, real special night. And uh, I don't know how close we're going to come, but we're going to eventually come close either tonight, tomorrow, or next homestand of 40,000 people in this ballpark. Yep, it's, it's never, never happened. Been, never been done. It's a paid attendance. Check no. Three and two the count on John Jay. All time record 39,585 opening day last year against the Phillies. Three and two. Toward left. Tabata over. And that'll do it. One, two, three for A.J. Burnett against these Redbirds. Marcos leading 7-1. can take home a Pirates cap or Roberto Clemente jersey with just the price of a ticket. Plus, of course, you always get a great discount when you bring a group along. Book your group outing by calling 1-800-BUY-BUCKS or go to Pirates.com slash groups. Last uh, homestand, regular season homestand, comes up Thursday the 12th. Four games against the Cubs, then four with the Padres and three big games against the Reds. Final homestand. Alvarez has grounded out and doubled. He doubled to start last inning over the head of John Jay on a pitch that was low and away. Now he takes a pitch down and in 2 and 0. Oh. Speaking of groups, Greg, uh, I've got a buddy, uh, Craig Norbert, who uh, was recently married to Leanne Labriola. They're going to come and they, they're going to get in one of the World Series boxes nice. right tomorrow with a bunch of people. Nice. Great way to celebrate a, a recent wedding. And watch the Buckos World Series sweep. Well, we've heard from so many people. Uh, how incredible 
as this season has been in particular coming to this ballpark. Our old friend uh, Elmer Gray was here last night, longtime scout. 3 0 pitch swinging away, sharply hit right at the second baseman Wong in shallow right. One down, brings up Marlon Bird. Yeah, you get one of these suites or one of these World Series suites or some of the club level boxes. Uh, it's just a fabulous way to enjoy a great evening as a host or a guest. Get on the list. <laughs> And that guest list, you'll enjoy it. It's a place to be this summer. Marlon Bird has had a large impact uh, already. A short stay with the Bucks, arriving from the New York Mets and appearing in his first game on Wednesday. And tonight, he has doubled, singled, scored a run, driven in a run. And he got the second inning rally started with that leadoff double. An overview of this season, Greg, it, it's been done a lot by pitching, and now you're you're adding some bats. And boy, if you can really really rev up the offense and takes a load off this pitching staff, uh, what what a, what a step toward balance. And it seems like it's it's going to be that way. You, you just haven't added bats. You, Added significant bats. Mm -hmm. Really. Now you get to a point where maybe you don't have to out pitch him every night. Maybe just out hit him a few nights. That's, that really is something that lets everybody relax. One ball, two strike count on Bird as Lance Lynn. Here in the fourth inning, he is due up third in the fifth. As he approaches 90 pitches to short, Descalzo gets Bird two outs. Football season kicks off next week, and you can get the latest on your Steelers during the Mike Tomlin press conference Tuesdays on Root Sports. Hear what Coach Tomlin has to say about the Steelers' upcoming season. And how the team's preparing for their first game next Sunday against the Tennessee Titans. Mike Tomlin press conference live Tuesday at noon here on Root Sports. And speaking of football, congratulations to the Upper St. Clair Panthers for their win over Woodland Hills last night. Just thought I'd mention that. Some people consider it an upset. I don't. Uh, McDonald's High School football Thursday coming up this Thursday. Seneca Valley and Pine Richland. Bouncing ball. And right in between the second baseman and the shortstop, and Jones beats it out. Wong and Descalzo converging. That shift on. Jones has an infield hit. Garrett doesn't get many of them, but good hustle combined with placement gets him the knock. Split the infielders. Long the outfield grass. Nice play, but too late. Twenty-two-year-old Fulton Wong. Eric Jones aboard. Russell Martin has walked and homered. Strikes and just the fourth for Lynn. The Pirates leading by six.
the sellout crowd. Jolly Rogers everywhere. AJ Burnett face the bottom third of the order. So far, so good for AJ. Uh oh, look at this live. There's Scott Bonnet, the clubhouse manager. There's New Bucko, Justin Morneau. I didn't see him hit. Did he hit punch in the clock, the time clock? Yeah, there it is, the time okay, clock right there. Just oh. going to go to uh, get on the, the cart. He's got his bats in tow, and he should be uh, in uniform before too long. Justin Morneau. Oh, yeah. Just arriving at PNC Park over by the garage. Heading to the Pirates Clubhouse. Bones will take care of him. Scott Bonnet, the clubhouse manager. Nice job, uh, gotcha. Great stuff. Two O count. Justin Morneau was traded for Alex Presley and a player to be named later or cash considerations. Hope you heard uh, Robbie Itzbukowski earlier going over some of the tweets his former teammates uh, talking about classy Justin Morneau. And you look at the 11 years with the Twins, four time All Star, the MVP in 2006. And you see the career in the postseason. Seven games of 310 average with a pair of homers. Two times silver slugger. I'm sure it's a little bittersweet, Steve, a guy that uh, grew up in the Twins organization. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he's, he's thrilled to be going to uh, a pennant contender, but it's got to be tough leaving all. Your friends and your baseball family. Liner toward left and a sliding catch by Tabula. Again, some leather. The double play is the pitcher's best friend, but those kind of decisions by your defensive players to go for the play instead of backing up and take the ball on the bounce. He makes the play. Nice leather work in back of A.J. Burnett. Give him a circle on that one. Tom would have made a nice uh, play similar to that one last night. Yep, the defense was exceptional at all aspects clicking. Timely hitting, good leather, brilliant pitching. Galzo ground single to right. And let's go downstairs to Robbie and Smikowski, who knows Justin Morneau, and uh, he might have been tipped off about this uh, trade even before we knew about it. Robbie? Yeah, well, a couple things. You talk about Justin Morneau and what a class individual he is. Before the plane even took off from Arlington, Texas, where the Twins were playing the Rangers, Justin Morneau had already sent a letter to the fans of the Minnesota Twins throughout, uh, through the Minneapolis Star Tribune's website and will be published in tomorrow's paper. And he wanted to thank the fans and the Twins organization for giving him the chance to realize his dream to play Major League Baseball. And he apologized for not bringing them a World Series, but also added that he enjoyed every single moment he had that Twins uniform on. And maybe the classiest thing, he signed it. Thank you for all your support through the years. Your friend, Justin Morneau. Class act. He was a big support supporter of juvenile diabetes um, in Minnesota and had a casino night every year. Put out 6-3 as batter is retired. Thanks to Robbie as we'll uh, be checking in with him as we go along. So that's it for Lance Lynn. Pete Cosma is retired. The pinch hitter, and so Seth Manus will be coming on in the bottom of the fifth. Two outs. Pretty incredible, Steve. The striking contrast between the Pirates and the Cardinals this year. Uh, the Pirates just beating up on the Cardinals 
pitchers, the starters in particular. Look at the numbers that the ERAs in this season series. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this really good Cardinal hitting team is in trouble with the Bucks pitching. On a strike on Carpenter. Once again, you can compile a lot of information, but you cannot predict. You can't write the script. You can't assume it's going to be the same that it, it's always been. Lance Lynn gives up seven runs on ten hits in four innings. Felt like he threw a thousand pitches. Yeah. That disappointed Lance Lynn for sure. The air to left, Tabata over, but it's going to be out of play. You do give him a little credit for hanging out in the dugout and not just going in and going to sit in the clubhouse. Conversation with Adam Wainwright. That, that really, it, it's not a big thing, but it doesn't go unnoticed by your teammates. Wainwright can uh, sympathize. Well, he was no, beat up ever. right last time. Two His innings, nine hundred runs. And I thought Reds. I thought he might uh, come out and start tomorrow. Yeah, I actually I did. Might too. The line shot foul. Adam Wainwright and Lance Lynn. Meanwhile, AJ Burnett. With a big lead. Trying to get the last out with a runner at second base. Carpenter has grounded to first and walked. And time called. Just try to go along step by step now, out by out. Go to zero up here. Again, it's keep kicking the can down the street. Did he go? He did. They chase that low Burnett curveball often enough where you can get those kind of results. Liriano gets a lot of those swings and misses downstairs. So does AJ. and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And it's time for a day automotive this day in Pirates history on this very day, 1968. Steve Blass makes his only appearance as a position player 
After getting the first batter of the game, he goes out to play left field. Elroy Face comes in to pitch to one batter. Elroy's 800 second appearance for the Pirates. One more than Walter Johnson had with the Senators. That sets a major league record. Most appearances with one club. Steve then returns to the mound, finishes the game without allowing a run, but does not get credit for the shutout. Still ends up leading the league with seven shutouts that year. Before the game was even over, Elroy Face traded to the Tigers. Thanks, Dale Automotive. We're going to make your day. Yeah, we knew the night before that that deal was happening or had happened, so they wanted more, one more shot for Elroy. It's still incredible to me that uh, I mean, it, I guess a nice gesture, but you end up well, if, you end up what, what should have been your eighth shutout. That would have uh, well, tied it, the Pirates all-time record for shutouts in a single season. Yeah. As, as you look back on it, uh, you know, it, it, it didn't seem like such a big deal at the time. You know, it, you know, as you look back, yeah, could have tied that. I don't know. Marvis puts a charge into one. Oh, he can't make the catch off the glove of John Jay. Marvis winds up at second with a double. The Pirates having some fun. Jay couldn't come down with the ball or get to the ball that Neil Walker hit, and he got a piece of this one, I believe, and Clint Barmus was thinking about three bases, but leadoff man holds up at second base. There goes Jay, and yeah, he got a piece of it. Couldn't close the glove around it. Yep. Hits off the outside of the glove, and the race is on. The dugout reacts. Keep it going. Keep it going. Everyone you add on now seem like five. Barmas with the double. Now Burnett can try and bunt him to third. And he takes it off the glove of the catcher. And so Barmas winds up at third anyway. How about this? And that's off the glove. Could that be a pass ball against Molina? Could be. Thought I heard some leather. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a clank. No that's a clank. That's a headline. That doesn't happen very often with Gutter Molina. AJ, put it in play to right field again like he did the first two times. One ball, one strike. Jay Burnett, how about this? With authority out of the reach of Alan Craig. Yep. That one not as good. That's a strikeout for Minas. Yeah, Lynn, uh, the final numbers four innings. Seven runs on ten hits. He walked three and struck out four. We have a tweet from at Pirates. That's a, the Pirates tweeting out this picture. Welcome to the box, Justin Morneau. Should be uh, making. We all welcome him. Yep. The bench anytime soon. There's ball one on top of the infield still in. Infield has erased a runner at the plate. And out number two, Descalzo throws to Molina. And not all that close at home plate. Now with a runner at first. Walker has singled walk and tripled. And another 
hit for Walker. Tabata will wind up at third. Boy, Neil, have yourself a night. Neil Walker has now singled, tripled, and doubled. Or rather, singled twice, tripled, and walked. As he has a three hit night. And on base four times. Last night, doubled and singled in four trips. Let's see if we can invite Andrew to the party. Uh, was invited last night, and he's still waiting for the invitation tonight. Strike one on McCutcheon. He struck out twice and popped up. To the count on McCutcheon. Still one ball and two strikes. Seventy four RBIs. Still do some damage in the month of August. Andrew still a chance. What a month it has been. Put a lid on it right here. Yeah. Let's run into one. Has pitched six scoreless innings this year against the Pirates. Now he falls behind three and two. Sinker slider gets a lot of ground balls. It's on a good many double plays. 24 years old from Pinehurst, North Carolina, East Carolina product. And touching down on strikes. 7 1 Bucks. Skipper and a hug. Justin Morneau is a pirate and now available to Clint Hurdle this game. Welcome to Pittsburgh. 
And I guess the, the handshakes with new teammates. This is his new home. And his Pirates lead the Cardinals seven to one, and now meeting uh, Rick Sofield. By the way, was the number one pick for the Minnesota Twins, I believe, back in the day. Welcome to the Bucks. Carlos Beltran. It's got to be a weird feeling, Steve Morneau. I, I mean, drafted yeah, by the Twins. I remember all the names. Put the faces with the names. The Twins draft pick. 11 years with the, the big league club. Because well, you get an idea how much he meant to the city as Liriano greets him. Former teammate, of course. Minnesota. Guys that are that attached and that beloved in a city usually love to finish out a career. Uh, that's, that's one of the things that they really think about and are important to them. That's not going to happen. I, mean, I guess could have turned down the trade if he wanted to for that reason. But uh, we, we heard kind of secondhand rumors that he actually kind of endorsed endorsed it in his own way. And, Center field, McCutcheon. One out. They're in the sixth inning. And Jay Burnett has given up the one run on four hits. That run came in the third inning on a Beltron single. Fans are welcoming the new Pirate. AT&T tweets scrawled uh, down the bottom of your screen. And as Justin Morneau has arrived. Hunt for October is on. Two big time acquisitions this week by Neil Huntington. Marlon Bird, the main piece from the Mets. And now Justin Morneau. Right handed batter and Morneau, a left handed hitter. A career 292 batter against right handed pitching. Hitting 281 this year versus righties. Our fans screaming for right field bat, first base bat. Here they are. Morno, a third round pick of the Twins in 1999. Made his big league debut at the age of 22 in 2003. Had a very strong month of August. Neil Huntington, talking about a strong year. A few years since joining the Pirates as the general manager. He's got to be uh, proud of the job that uh, his staff has done. He always gives credit to the folks that work under him. Well, talent evaluation, people seeing things that maybe other people don't see that uh, create a situation where you get a player that what you saw. Is what is going to provide the success. Maybe some other people didn't see it, so you get better uh, talent evaluation. These things can happen. He was uh, zeroing in on both Bird and Morneau. There's a ground ball to third. And now the rest of the Pirates will meet Morneau as A.J. Burnett has a 1 2 3 sixth inning. Those nine pitches. Pirates lead 7 to 1.
Justin Morneau meeting his new teammates Russell Martin fellow Canadian Garrett Jones fellow teammate with the twins years ago the rest of the Buccos will come in and shake hands with Justin Morneau Clint Barmas Neil Walker Marlon Bird the two new Pirates and Andrew McCutcheon he joins the pennant race Shane Robinson takes over in right field Kevin Segrist lefty comes on to make his 31st appearance for a sparkling ERA similar numbers to Mark Melanson Twenty eight innings forty strikeouts Seth Maness gives up a couple of hits. Oh high atop. The rotunda area. A fly ball toward the left by Alvarez and this is going to be out of play. Has doubled over John Jay's head in the third inning. Started that frame. The Pirates scored five, sent nine to the plate. And the one hop shot to Descalzo. And Alvarez retired. Aerial coverage provided by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Great shots from the blimp on this Labor Day weekend. The Pirates shut out the Red, the Cardinals 5 to nothing last night and lead 7 to 1 here in the sixth. The Reds are leading the Rockies 3 0 at Coors Field. There's a line drive to left field hit hard. Holiday is there. Marlon Bird, two for four in this ball game. Two hard hit balls, but one at the shortstop, one at the left fielder. Two up, two down. Justin Morneau was one of the players that uh, was kind of blocking Garrett Jones. From the big league twins, along with a handful of others. And that's how Jones made his way to Pittsburgh. Signed as a minor league free agent. Talking with Morneau. And now Gabby Sanchez pinch hitting for Garrett Jones. Out of play. Well, the Pirates have not scored in the last couple of innings, so this huge, huge, huge crowd kind of just settling in. There's that rotation. <laughs> it looks like a cell block, you know, various <laughs> levels of a cell block. Bring that up. There's an old Elvis Presley movie that brought that to mind. Sanchez fouls this one out of play off to the right. It's 0 2 on Gabby Sanchez. Two outs in the sixth. Pirates have out hit the Cardinals 12 4. Sechrist follows Seth Manus, who followed Lance Lynn. Lynn on the hook. I don't know if I've ever seen it five and six deep on the road time. I've seen you know, maybe a row, a couple rows. We may hit 40 tonight. One and two on Gabby Sanchez. Everything in order, everything where it should be. It looks so perfect. 
around the bed of emeralds. And AJ looking pretty yeah. good. Real good. He has no problem performing in front of a big audience. That ball lined hard towards center field. This is going to get down and get past Jay. And Gabby Sanchez with a double. And he has picked it up recently. Not three hits the other night for Gabby. This one hooked enough just to stay to the left center side of Jay in center field. And he got a lot of it to turn it back around and hook it away from the center fielder. It just stays there. His seventh hit in his last 16 at bats. The last 35 games hitting at a 330 clip. 17th double of the season for Gabby Sanchez. Jay. <laughs> they're they're, the they're working him. They worked Lance Lynn and they, they worked John Jay. They're working him again. Yeah. Martin the fly ball. Jay makes the catch. Pirates lead after six by six. Center. Penguins training camp starts September 11th, and Pascal Dupuis was in Altoona to shoot the ceremonial first puck as opposed to throwing the first pitch. And there he is wearing flip flops, as Dan Otash noted. And he fired one. Nice catch there made by the goalie. It's the second time Pascal Dupuis has done this in Altoona. Matt Cook and uh, James Neal have done it in the past before. And uh, the funny thing is, the goalie made the stop this time. There he's taking a photo with Tony Sanchez right now, Altoona. Rocking the hockey style jerseys. That one was caught last time and the puck took off on him, Greg and Steve, which is pretty funny. And he hit the goalie in the mask the last time he did it. So this time I was a much safer play, but a pretty cool thing. Pascal Dupuis signed a lot of baseballs in his trip to Altoona. Like a lot of fun. And uh, Tony Sanchez has been uh, playing for uh, Altoona since being uh, sent there. It's kind of a paper move. Jeff Locke arrived there today. Gabby Sanchez. Is now at first base. Uh, those players stay there until the end of the Altoona season, which is coming up in a couple of days. They'll be back here in Pittsburgh. Yadier Molina, 0 for 2. Kind of burning up Route 22. Good news, back and forth. Ball 
a strike on Molina. A little early for raising the Jolly Roger, but uh, let's hope that they can keep it flying tonight. Nine more outs. One ball, two strikes. See how efficient A.J. Burnett can be this inning. He's at 83 pitches for the night. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that total, especially when you combine it with the fact he's only given up one run. That's the real pitch count. <laughs> two and two. Usually the hitters will tell you where that pitch count is going. He's got Molina to fly out and bounce to short. Now three and two. Pirates have done just a great job this year against Molina. Has just four hits and 35 at bats this season against Pirates pitching. Him up against everybody else at 3:30 coming into the game. With the Pirates' uh, pitchers' credit, they're limiting Javier Molina to a 1.14 batting average, and really doing a good job against most of the Redbirds. Yeah. As the record attests. Another 3-2 pitch. Bounce left side. And Alvarez will cut off Barmas. One out. Sundays are kids' days at PNC Park tomorrow, 135, and all kids 14 and under will take home a Pirates uh, earbud thanks to Chevrolet. Come early for the number one Cochran Family Fun Zone out on Federal Street. And of course, after the game, kids can run the bases. For tickets, go to Pirates.com. A lot of kids in the yard again tonight. Operative word again. They're coming out. They're learning that pirate baseball can be this good. And AJ Burnett putting on a show for all these people. They're liking what they see. On John Jay. Half swing foul stays 0 and 2. A piece of Russell Martin. You, know, you watch Liriano last night, and it, you really had a sense that obviously he had control of the ball game. A.J. Burnett is that is uh, what do they say? Hand on the neck, foot on the neck, as Clint likes to say. He's in control of this ball game. Strike three, call. Sixth strikeout for Burnett tonight. Nice looking breaking ball. Picks up the inside corner. Right there. Two quick outs in the seventh. AJ rolling on. He's retired seven in a row and 12 of the last 13 Cardinals batters. And another one, two, three inning. He's in control of the ball. He might have his sights set on nine. Seventh inning stretch. We will keep it here. On a glorious night in Pittsburgh. The Pirates are now six outs away. From taking over sole possession of first place in the National League Central Division. Follow the bouncing Eaton Park smiley cookie and join everyone watching at home on Root Sports as we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game.
ready for Sky Blast. And they are having a blast already. Their Pirates leading 7 to 1, out hitting the Cardinals 13 4. Scoring two in the second off Lance Lynn. Put a five spot on the board in the third after the Cardinals had scored a run to make it two to one in the top of that inning. Rob Johnson is the new catcher. He will hit in the second spot of the order. And John Axford makes his Cardinals debut. He was picked up yesterday in a trade with the Milwaukee Brewers. Boy, it looks strange to see him in this uniform showing the team socks. Cut high just under the knee and John Axford once one of the dominating closers in the National League will try to find it with the Cardinals. Still plenty of speed. Fly ball to right. No, Felix PA is going to pinch hit for Burnett. Great job by the Pirates starter. Piggybacking Liriano last night. Very impressive for AJ tonight. Seven, giving up one run. Just four hits. The pitcher will be Vin Mazzaro. Walk and six strikeouts. The eight takes ball one. Ball a strike on Felix PA. Two at bats for PA. It's possible we'll see Morneau at some point tonight. It's also possible that Clint Herbal just wants him to settle in. Just try to attach the names of the faces rather than just throw them out there as a pinch hitter. Maybe questions about the ballpark, some of the unique. Things that he's saying from that side of the field. Long throws out PA. So Lance Lynn goes four. AJ Burnett seven gives up the one run on four hits. Pirates chase Lance Lynn. You're only as good as the next night's starter. It worked out nicely tonight. Jose Tabata. Burnett CRA drops to 3.09. That's uh, creeping up in the top 10 in the RA. Line to right. Robinson there. Well, the Pirates go down in order for the first time. Lead it 7 1.
that because of A.J. Burnett. Look at the strikeouts. Breaking balls downstairs. Everything downstairs. Downstairs. Again. Chasing the breaking ball. They're taking the good ones that are well placed. And you get a righty-lefty situation. Liriano gets a lot of breaking ball strikes and strikeouts downstairs. A.J. getting his share and then some tonight. Six more outs to take over first place again in the central. They set the stage for a big Sunday afternoon on this Labor Day weekend. And the Pirates have their sights set on another. Felix P.A. takes over in left field. And then Mazzaro on the mound. Very good overall, but especially good since the All-Star break with an ERA under two for the right-hander out of the bullpen. Got to 40,000. 39,514 announced. It's the second largest crowd in the history of PNC Park, the largest this season. I bet they missed a few at the concession stands and the restrooms. That would have taken it to 40. Yep. 39,514. 17 sellouts. Too shy of the all time record. 19. And they open PNC Park. Ground ball. Diving stop. Walker from his knee. Gets him. And gets a call perhaps from Scott Berry. Descalzo retired on a fabulous play by Neil Walker. And Mike Matheny is going to come out. And why at this point, uh, the way things are going, Mike Matheny is, is not in a very good frame of mind. And he's going to get his money's worth. This, this could be a, a frustration argument. Not that they're wrong perhaps Neil Walker trying to match up what his shortstop has been doing all night and wow looks like the Cardinals had a real good argument they won't win it and Matheny retreats very close very close closer than it looked initially oh, what a play Neil Walker I mean he's been doing a lot of that all summer he and Barmas can really pull off some sparklers they've each done it tonight. Shane Robinson. His first at bat. Very close. Neil Walker. Robbing Descalzo. Man, he's had a fine night. With the bat. And right there. Flashing the leather. The only thing we haven't seen tonight is the wave. All right. Is that Mr. Praying Mantis? Looks like it. Up, up toward the seats. Alvarez. Enough. Room for that one. One and two. Right over toward the camera well. Oh, send that uh, insect, whatever it was. Might have been playing Mantis over in the radio booth. Introduce it to Bob. He enjoys those things. Maybe it's just spiders, but I might get his attention too. Two two count now on Shane Robinson. It's off the cup now, Steve. Oh, yeah. Very stylish. Yep. Yep, it is. Towards center, McCutcheon racing back toward the wall. And a nice running grab by McCutcheon. No problem. Two outs. McDonald's High School football returns to Root Sports every Thursday this fall. The action kicks off live one week from tonight, September 5th. Pine Richland Rams taking on the Seneca Valley Raiders Thursday, September 5th, 7 o'clock on Root Sports. Neil Walker will be watching that one. Pine Richland's uh, 
Eric Kasparovich, former Pitt Panther, going to make his head coaching debut. Seneca Valley head coach Don Hall going to have a new quarterback, his son TJ. A junior going to lead the offense for the Raiders. Should be a good one. One won the count on Matt Carpenter. Two outs, nobody on. Fernando Salas. Getting ready. Two and one. Carpenter has grounded out, walked, and struck out. Total of five base runners tonight for the Cardinals. They were four hit last night and shut out. Pirates pitchers have allowed four hits tonight and the one run that came in the third inning. A.J. Burnett going seven. All right, we got the wave going now. Everything's okay. Oh, off the glove of Walker. He wanted that one, too. <laughs> he had a chance to have two sparklers. Rob Johnson will get his first at bat. If, he, if Neil gets this one, the Cardinals really got to wonder what's going on tonight. He knew he had a chance. He knew he had a chance to make a real good one. Matt's saying, what is going on here? Carlos Beltran. I'm sorry, Carlos Beltran was in this spot. And Rob Johnson is up there now. Looked up at that scoreboard. I think that uh, Beltran was in this spot. And hitting right hand. To the count now to Rob Johnson. Tomorrow afternoon. Bucks expect to face a left hander. And that'll do it. And Mazzaro. Scoreless eight.
Looking good for the Pirates to take over sole possession in the division with the Reds, uh, you say, comfortably in, in front, but uh, they are at Coors Field, so you never know. New pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, it'll be Fernando Salas. Worked through Neil Walker, Andrew McCutcheon, and Pedro Alvarez. His numbers. Pitched a 1 2 3 seventh inning last night, the former closer for these Cardinals. Nice debut for uh, Axford, 1 2 3 seventh. the catch. The Walker three hits in four at bats. Nice night for Neil Walker. Imagine that batting average up. Tough to do that at this point of the season with all the at bats piled up. Bottom of your screen a ticker of tweets. Folks pumped up. About Morneau, the acquisitions, and the hunt for October. October, here we come. The hunt for Bucktober is it, on. It's almost like we've got to physically be there. It's been so long. It, it's, it's great to speculate and anticipate. Can't hit, wait for it to happen. Not much talk about 500 anymore, is there? Nope. Nope. Tonight the Pirates uh, well on their way to winning their 79th game as McCutcheon drives one the other way. Robinson makes that catch. And I think win number 79 came on October 2nd last year. I think you're right. Something like that. The Pirates finished 79 and 83. Yeah, their 79th win on October the 2nd. Beat the Braves five to one. That was it. That was last last game of the season. Uh, next day next they time. lost to Atlanta. Yep. Alvarez now swing for the fences with the new home run derby mobile game from MLB.com available on iPhone and iPad. Download free today. Strike on the Pirates third baseman. A five run third inning. Giving the Pirates a 7 1 lead. That's where we stand here in the eighth. Thirteen hit attack for the Bucks. Two and two on Alvarez. Didn't miss by a lot. There he is. We'll have to find out if he's in the starting lineup tomorrow, though. The way uh, Sanchez has been hitting lefties. And again, we anticipate a lefty tomorrow for St. Louis, so fly ball to left. And the catch made, and the Pirates go down in order in the eighth. Three more outs to get. Ben Mazzaro takes the hill.
coming up on the road trip after tomorrow's finale against the Cardinals. Road trip uh, in Milwaukee, off day in St. Louis, and the next weekend at Bush Stadium and the final three interleague games against the Rangers down in Arlington. Final homestand starts uh, September the 12th, and tonight, Justin Morneau arrived during the ball game. Put on his uni, got the handshake, the hug from his new manager. And renewed old acquaintances with uh, Francisco Liriano, former twins, fellow Canadians Russell Martin and Morneau. And another former twin there, Garrett Jones. Now Matt Holliday, 6-3, quickly one out. Yeah, the Shark Tank, uh, Vin Mazzaro, gets to scoreless eight. Smiles from the new bucko. He helps to be up seven to one. Yeah. Little smiles for sure. Going to start selling the uh, fins instead of that, you know, foam rubber uh, number one. Maybe start selling those foam fins. They might be out there already. Who knows? Oh, and one on Alan Craig. Oh, yeah. They're a stylish fin. The injury uh, a couple weeks ago at the top. Ball one strike on Alan Craig. We got that call. Ground ball and a fair ball inside the first base back. Craig will have his second hit. Bird gets over there quickly. Top of the strike zone slides it between Sanchez and first base. So Craig has his second hit. It's the sixth for the Cardinals. And Matt Adams on his birthday, 25 today, will pinch hit. Slippery rock product. Has a strong contingent from the state college area. He was born and raised Phillipsburg. All one on Matt Adams. Inching for Salas. One out, one on. Get a ground ball, end it like we ended it last night. Yeah. Abruptly. Two and one. Get hyped. They have been. They are. They will continue to be. Two two count. Watching Bucko baseball everywhere here at PNC Park and across the country tonight. From uh, so many Pirate fans watching everywhere, including our buddy Eddie Olchik. Eddie O. He's watching Edzo. tonight. You know the doc somewhere oh, yeah. watching. Oh, no doubt. Whoa. Three and two. Could have got that one. And Mark tried to bring it in. Always get it. Three and two. Zero facing the pinch hitter Matt Adams. Bounce toward first. Gabby Sanchez backs up. Tosses to Zero for the second out. Take what the play gives you. And now everybody will stand here. Thirty-nine thousand five hundred 
14, one out away from regaining sole possession of first. Listen to this foul. John Jay to the plate. 0 for 3. Shades of the early 90s. The volume increases every time that Mazzaro winds up. Left field. PA raise the Jolly Roger. The first place Bucks beat the Cardinals. Again. Back to back resounding victory, Steve. The Pirates are indeed putting a foot down on these St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, they really are, and it, and it starts with pitching. Liriano, A.J. Burnett, add some offense. They scored what five last night five seems like a ton when you get that kind of pitching yes. seven is is magnificent when you get the job that uh, AJ Burnett did tonight good stuff and now your goals change your goals change you were thinking about okay first of all let's not get swept we, we, we can stay real real good let's win that first one and the goals change all right now we can get the series if we get a win tonight and now the goals change Sweep as possible. Yeah, no holiday for these Cardinals on this Labor Day weekend. We expect Chris Johnson to pitch tomorrow for the Bucks against a lefty Tyler Lyons. Pirates win it tonight, seven to one. And now let's send it back to the studio.